Well folks, Oceana Cruises has done it. The upscale line managed to improve its already great ships with the latest generation of rest and relaxation and still the best cuisine at sea. Welcome to Popular Cruising. I'm your host Jason Leppard, and this is our deck by deck review and tour of Oceana's Vista. Starting low on deck five and working our way on up is the ship's central reception, destination services, and concierge area and atrium, all punctuated by a stunning spiral staircase and beautifully illuminated chandelier. If you haven't already done so, we invite you to please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our new videos are published. Also on this level is a series of three boutiques, selling the likes of ship models, logo items, and even adorable teddy bears, plus high-end jewelry, perfumes, and other accessories. Among Vista's included specialty dining options is the returning red ginger for Pan-Asian cuisine served in a very stylish venue. We were only on board for a brief two-day preview sailing, so we didn't have a chance to dine here, unfortunately. But based on previous ships, we know this is always a standout. On the opposite side of the ship is no longer the exceptional Jacques for French food from the line's executive culinary director, Papan. But the elevated American fare of Ember is a refreshing new concept and a fiery brick-lined atmosphere, complete with a neat open display kitchen. Here we were treated to one of Oceana's signature wine pairing meals, and suffice it to say, the following courses were delicious and illustrative of the line's continued culinary prowess. From caviar and a fresh burrata salad, to an exquisite twice-baked lobster souffle, equally marvelous roasted Chateaubriand, and not only a duo of fine French cheese, but also a delicate, raspberry caramelized mille foie. Also showcased here was Oceana's partnership with gourmet ice cream purveyor, Humphrey Slocomb, where we tasted unforgettable flavors in Sunday form. When you're ready to book your cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, just click the link right here, or follow the website, phone number, or email address below. Lastly on Deck 5 is the Ford Vista Lounge. The inviting single-story theater isn't massive, but neither is the ship's passenger count of 1,200 guests. In fact, there's more room to go around per passenger aboard Vista than on her slightly smaller predecessors. As for the shows themselves, you can expect traditional reviews staging numbers from Adele, Billy Joel, and other hit makers. An excellent live band is always great to see, and the singers and dancers do their best to energize the crowd. However, this video actually makes the performances appear a bit more exciting than they were in person, because the basic production just did not knock my socks off. But I do give the company props for attempting some unique kinetic lighting here. The otherwise uninspired shows are at least fun enough to pass the time. Next, heading up the beautiful stairs, we arrive to Deck 6, where past golden partitions sit to the Martinis Lounge and Bar. Just one of the venues to feature talented live musicians, such as this classic string quartet. Even without a live pianist playing, it's a welcome space to gather and enjoy a cocktail throughout the day. And farther down is the handsomely decorated Grand Lounge, with even more comfortable seating and additional opportunities to catch smaller live sets. The casino on board is plenty to offer some table games and slot machines for those looking to gamble. But even more enticing is the attached, new Founders Bar. Bespoke cocktails and a lively environment make it the place to be before or after dinner. The only downside is there isn't enough space to cover its sheer popularity and seat everyone during opening hours. Offering considerably more breathing room by comparison is the Grand Dining Room. Its floor slopes down to facilitate an effectively raised ceiling in what just might be my favorite main restaurant on a cruise ship. I find the design here to be awe-inspiring for blending casual Parisian cafe style with elegant wall paneling and fixtures. And just as tantalizing are the dishes enjoyed for dinner. Caviar to start, followed by another decadent souffle of cheese no less, outstanding lobster bisque, a seldom seen French monkfish stew, and a celebratory macaron. 
Then jumping up to the cabin and suite levels is where on Deck 9 we enjoyed a comfortable concierge level veranda stateroom. Especially for its Oceana staple, ultra plush bed that is undeniably teddy bear approved. Plus the standard US electrical outlet and USB and USB-C charging ports. And not just one nightstand, but at both. All facing a mirrored wardrobe wall, sizable flat panel television, and vanity desk with an impressive addition of three more outlets and four bonus USB ports. Plus, there are many drawers here, as well as a lovely sofa and table, and of course a nicely furnished balcony with views to the ports of call and ocean beyond. Back inside is a well-stocked minibar and pantry space above, with extra cubbies and a safe. And next to it is the cabin's hanging closet, which I would say is just a bit undersized. But there are lots of wall hooks, including those on the opposite wall and behind the bathroom door, where layouts are just right, with a corner set of drawers, shelf and upper cabinet, perfectly spaced corner toilet, premium bulgari toiletries, a single sink basin, more towel hooks, and best of all, an ample square footprint shower that is very easy to maneuver in, versus let's say bouncing off the walls of claustrophobic alternatives. They definitely did a great job of maximizing space here. Also available to guests in concierge accommodations is an exclusive concierge lounge as a bonus retreat with a concierge on hand as well as a snack alcove to grab various treats throughout the day. Before heading up again, I don't ordinarily point out stair and elevator lobbies, but Vista's Art Deco varieties are sublime to look at. And then once to Deck 12, the Terrace Cafe awaits as the ship's self-service buffet but again with enhanced design attributes. Just look at that fantastic mosaic tile and upgraded food choices. Fresh stations are quite varied in their offerings. And patrons can dine either inside or out of the terrace itself. For instance, I enjoyed a lunch of tasty expanded Cuban cuisine. Replacing La Reserve on Vista is the healthier fare of Aquamar Kitchen. While it's a bit of a bummer to see the venue dedicated to wine-paired dinners removed, such aforementioned meals are still hosted elsewhere, and this alternative is popular enough to be rolling out to other ships in the Oceana fleet. On the flip side, meanwhile, is Waves Grill, for poolside burgers and more gourmet items by day, and freshly serving as a casual pizzeria by night. The accompanying Waves Bar also serves the pool and its surrounding areas. And the pool deck itself is simply splendid. Of particular note is the expanded pool ledge that extends to half a dozen cabana-like shaded daybeds that are freely available first come, first served. And of course you can never go wrong with a classic hot tub. Stepping above to deck 14 is the surrounding sun deck for even more welcoming padded loungers and views to the pool. And especially nice are these additional resort style corner cabanas to occupy. Forward of which is the culinary center for those seeking to up their personal cooking skills at one of two dozen available stations. Classes cost extra, but are well worth it for the skills imparted with a side of scenic views. Students can even enjoy their fresh creations afterwards at this newly attached side studio space. Also coming along for the ride again is an artist loft, where guests can interact with an artist in residence and create their own colorful masterpieces accordingly. Or the Link Digital Center is a sort of old school internet cafe that expands to computer classes in the adjacent conference center. Here sessions may include photo editing for social media, also with its own vistas to the destination. While I'm never a fan of onboard smoking and the resulting secondhand fumes, the smoking lounge on board does contain them some, as does an additional poolside equivalent for those who do light up. Much better, in my opinion, is an observation lounge. While not as large or as tall as on other ships, Horizon still shines, now pushed even farther forward in the layout and thus closer to bow views. There's just no beating such a space for relaxing and taking in the passing scenery, particularly when it's accompanied by a full-service bar, side bandstand for live music, and dance floor. 
and serving as a sort of secondary midship observation lounge is a trio of wraparound scenic venues, starting with the ship's well-stocked library. Its nautical touches and large collection of books are impressive, and both are attached to baristas. Here among timeless decor, specialty coffees are included in the fare. Also complimentary are pastries and other snacks from the lovely bakery space right behind. And remarkably, there are still more specialty dining venues to showcase on this deck. The included Polo Grill is Vista's signature steakhouse. And I must say, the retooled interior design is just lovely. Private parties can reserve Privé, yet another design standout nestled between Polo Grill and Toscana for an added cost. Or back to included fare is Toscana on the other side for the ship's exquisite Italian cuisine among the same elevated decor that is a striking hallmark shipwide. Ascending again to Deck 15 is the ship's fitness track that wraps around its funnel. Plus shuffleboard for nostalgia aficionados on the port side. And on the starboard side is a traditional croquet and bocce ball court as well. A bit more contemporary overall is the Ford Fitness Center and Aquamar Spa. Besides all the latest techno gym equipment, there's also a side motion studio to utilize. And there's also a full-fledged barbershop and salon at the entrance to the spa on the other side. Past the shop selling extra elements products is the spa's check-in desk and helpful staff. And in the middle of it all is a relaxation room to rest before treatments. The treatment rooms themselves radiate out from there. That is before arriving at the thermal suite and its reinvigorating experience shower, steam room, and sauna. Of course, the creme de la creme of the spa is the outdoor terrace that sits above the observation lounge, complete with requisite heated tile loungers, padded ones, and a pair of corner whirlpools. Not to mention a fully equipped hydrotherapy pool that certainly beckons as well. Concierge level guests and those in accommodations above have free access to this wonderland of R&R &R to enjoy. And last but not least on deck 16, is yet another array of sporting options by way of a driving net, cornhole, and golf putting greens, as well as a full paddle tennis court rounding it all out. From this level there's also a great view of the pool deck and aft smokestack, which at night spells out Vista in a unique scrolling LED display, cleverly crowning the chromatic illumination of the pool below. Vista is nothing short of a stunner, and here are our final pros and cons to wrap up our review. What we disliked as pains in the aft are the uninspired production shows in the theater, the great founder's bar being too small for its popularity, and the loss of Jacques and La Reserve for new concepts. But what we most liked and can take a bow are the ship's overall improved layout and passenger space ratio, its standout spa, pool, and sun decks, and still offering the best fine dining at sea. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, Please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.